Okay, well the package has arrived from a company called Galv Optics. Handle with care, beautifully wrapped. This is an unboxing video. Uh, I've ordered this uh, about three weeks ago. Let me close the window, keep the noise down. Um, how does one go about opening it? Let's try down here. Where's the top? Maybe from this side. Definitely a way in. It's a good sign. You're not exactly sure how to open the box. Where's the seam for that? Okay, let's just try over here. I'm just gonna go on the side of the box. That was probably the side of the box. Never mind. What have we got? Can you see that? Beautifully packed. Cerium oxide polish. Oh yeah. That's gotta be the glass. What else have we got? in here um let me get my fingers on it uh, paperwork second stage 400 grit third stage 303 uh, uh grinding powers this is actually a telescope kit mirror kit that they sell at galv optics first stage grinding powder 180 silicon carbide and dig into the bottom here. Oh, what do we got? Whoa. Google's optical polishing pitch, number 73. This is uh, quite heavy, actually. Kilo of goo. Uh, I think uh, it comes with an original brand uh, logo. And they've torn that off and put their logo on. Rebranding, we like it. White labeling. Oh, check it out. Oh, ho, 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 how am I going to get that out of the tube? Right. Uh, that is the main stuff, I think. There's nothing. Oh, 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 oh. And more pitch. Oh, got some, some more stuff. Okay. So it looks to be packing very well packed. Let's have a look at the mirrors. Uh, this is a six inch kit, 150 mil uh, glass blanks, I hope. Again, how do we open this package? I'll start with a sharp knife and see how we go. Okay. Glass blank number one. Glass blank number two. This is for, uh, I think this is the tool, 19 mil thick, it looks like. And this should be the blank, which should be an inch thick. So let's just do some comparisons. Open this, opening with care, handling with care. Quite excited, actually. Let me get into the box. Okay. Okay. Ready? Wow. 
Look at that. It is a beautiful, big-ass piece of glass. <laughs> That's an inch thick. There we go. This is Pilkington uh, plate glass. This is pretty standard glass. Uh, and they clearly cut it out um, of uh, a larger sheet. And then they have edged it. And it's beveled. So uh, there's no chip risks. Uh, they've done an excellent job, actually, creating that. Uh, a few superficial scratches on the uh, one layer. Uh, that's okay. That's going to be gone. And um, pretty clean on the back, actually. So I guess that's going to be the back. And this scratched area is going to be the uh, area to work on. Wow. And then let's have a look at the tool. The tool is another piece of glass in this case, which is used to create uh, essentially a spherical surface between the two um, pieces of glass. The tool will take on a uh, con uh, get this right concave surface, and the mirror will take a convex surface, and the two. So if that's the, the 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 mirror on the bottom, okay, that's convex, uh, concave. Then this is the tool, and you're going to rub the two together like this to create that spherical shape. I have to say the packaging is amazing. They really they know how to handle glass. These guys. There we go. And this, yes, this is the uh, tool. I don't know what GP refers to. Again, beautifully cut and edged, ready to go to work. Um, and you can see there's slight differences in diameter, which is fine. This is six inches, uh, one inch thick. So it's a six to one ratio, which is classic textbook mirror. The tool, tool can be pretty much anything. It can be thinner than this. <clears throat> and it's really kind of the disposable piece of glass um, to be uh, to be used and yeah it's got some scratches in it <coughs> but again what's going to happen is you're going to be grinding across it and this is going to get scratched into the opposite shape very very cool and then eventually once you start finish the rough grinding and you've got to a, a surface that ready for refinement the idea is you'll use pitch on the tool and create a layer of black pitch uh, segmented, which will then be used for the finer polishing to really bring up the surface to uh, the right finish in terms of surface finish, but also uh, a polishing. Sorry, uh, I haven't shown my face. Exciting stuff. Bye. All right, DIY day. Now we can see the tools, the drills, and my latest fantastic tool. A router oh my god this thing is amazing uh, plunge router 70 quid on Amazon uh, yeah fantastic and it has a fitment to make circular cutouts and this is what I have made today this morning on a beautiful day uh, you can see the pivot hole in the middle and one of the router edges is sort of like a, a scalloped s curve it kind of goes down and out on the other side, I've done a rounded off edge. Can't really see what I'm doing because of the screen in the sun, but I hope you can see that. Really nice bit of pine. I'm making a turntable that will eventually go on another piece of wood, like on tabletop. And the idea is to pivot it in the middle and then let it overhang at the edge. So I've made a sort of a nice finished edge so I can turn it like this. In the middle, I'm gonna make a telescope mirror. How cool is that? So this is kind of the, the table to grind it on. So there'll be a piece of glass here, which is the uh, the tool, which will grind against the mirror, which will be another piece of glass here. And you slide them back and forth, and then you rotate the mirror one way, like clockwise. And then you take this thing, and you rotate the tool, which is fixed, the other piece of glass, which is fixed to this, uh, counterclockwise, you know. So you're kind of alternating the directions uh, on the cuts. Anyway, fantastic and it's sunny and I'm not going to cut the grass.
All right, update on the table to make the telescope. This is the disc I cut up this morning with the lovely sort of uh, routed edges. You can see that, ah, oh, so nice. I've countersunk a hole and put a coach bolt, hammered it in so it uh, stays as a pivot. This is the tabletop that I'm gonna, that I've made. I have a plank of wood and again, I've routed the uh, edges over and underneath, made a nice little rebate. Then I cut a notch for the pivot table, put it through the, the board with a lock nut on there. And so if this becomes a tabletop down, mounted onto something, some stable legs, the glass sits on this, I'm grinding here. One is fixed to this and now I can turn it. And then the other one sits on that and I can slide it around and grind it off. So coming, coming along, uh, really pleased with it actually. And uh, it's got to be waterproofed with some varnish. Yeah, and then I got to figure out how I'm going to mount this uh, top onto the legs. That's the next installment. Anyway, ignore the Spanish if you can hear it in the background. <clears throat> so this is an update on the build. Uh, there'll be a covering in here. The tool fits in there with a gap. And then that's a little wedge. That is flush. You can see that holding it in place. Yeah. That's all you need really then to turn it. The observant in you will obviously see that it's a little off center, but hey, that's uh, <clears throat> designed into the system. It's not actually. But uh, I'm getting to the point where I'm over-engineering this table perhaps, but that is pretty good. So as you just turn it, and you turn it, and then you turn your tool, and I've gone for, um, they have to be relatively low supports so that when the other mirror is on top, it goes over, it doesn't kind of clip anything. Also, I've gone for plastic and no screws. Uh, the way I've done this, you can just about see they're drilled through and these are actually feet off Ikea furniture and the the uh, thread is a T-nut. So actually if I uh, show you, take that out, it's one of those. And that's, I've cut, cut them down with the uh, uh, axe grinder grinding tool to hickey and uh, there we go so getting there I got to waterproof it and I need to mount it to the legs you haven't seen the legs yet but uh, pop that in standard Ikea dowel 8 mil a little bit of tension sits tight look at that neat job I think And I bet you're wondering, why is there a hole? And I just stick that in, in case I lose it. Although, it's not particularly... Ah, it's alright. Yeah. Okay, here is the uh, table that I built. This, um, this black thing is from a car boot sale. Cost me about 10 pounds. Uh, it cost me exactly 10 pounds. It's folding legs, so it's portable. It's a miter saw support stand. Uh, and I built the tabletop to fit. Um, this is where I sit. This is where I turn. There's the peg. In fact, I think the way I've designed it is these are on the radius of the mirror. And this one is set a bit lower, so the mirror should push up against these two. And this slides in, and it should be central, but I'll test it later. Um, important that you're able to clean this thoroughly between work because you want to get different grits. You don't want to mix it up. So I'll put uh, some uh, bungees to hold it down. And on this side, there's a little block of wood that kind of acts as a key to fit into the tabletop. And, you know, the thing is absolutely solid. I bought it because the state, the stability of the stand um so there we go scratch built mirror telescope 
grinding station. It's got to be waterproof, so I got to varnish it. Um, underneath, I don't know if you can see, a couple of boards screwed in to the top board. Uh, and there's only that little peg there, that little block of wood, which just split as I drill it in. I was in a rush. Uh, but that's disposable. I can change that as we go forward. Uh, and I've rounded and routed this panel in the middle because that's the only place really where I get my hand kind of close by. Everything's nice and soft. Nice and soft. And hey, when you got a router, <laughs> route. Uh, okay, so that is uh, the station. It looks pretty neat. Bye. Prototype on the table. Um, I've put in a little bit of uh, friction material here on the edge, just kind of roughly taped it down. And I've got my motor with a sort of a converter for the sprocket. You can see the sprocket back there. Uh, again, with a bit of friction material. I rest it there and I kind of put it against the, the rim. Uh, this is on. I'm going to throw the switch. Well, I'm going to throw the switch and then press this into the rim. Oh, start again, switch it on. And press the glass weight is on the disc. And it's turning. So I could do that. Uh, to clean it up a little bit. The problem is the friction material, I think. Find a better material or something. And of course, this has a speed controller down here. So if I, uh, huh, one hand, turn up the knob, it's a bit quicker. The various noises are whether or not that disc touches touches the uh, thing or not. And also, the more voltage you pass to the motor, the quieter it gets. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi. So about six revolutions, sorry, six seconds per revolution, it's 10 RPM. Sounds about right. Maybe a bit slower. And I can change the direction and stuff. Pretty cool. All right, experimenting. Ciao.